begin with, the project here is a social sculpture that we're doing over two years where my practice and the practice of Steve and his lab exist in the same space and time. Social sculpture is a form of art that came out of the 60s, come by Joseph Beuys. Uh, some of you may be familiar with his work. And it was based on the processes of evolution, where you put two social structures in contact with one another, and they exert forces on each other because of their differences, thus resulting in a shift in, each, in the two practices and also in the mental uh, constructs of the people at participating. Um, in addition to this, there's influences from other art, uh, such as Nancy Graves, who took camel forms and transplanted them from the Natural History Museum into the Art Museum in the Whitney in 1969, uh, thus resulting in, in a, a reshifting of um, ideological uh, structures just by moving these objects. Also, Mark Dion, who uses the processes of science and anthropology, uh, but in redirecting their angle, it actually reveals, um, through breaking some of the structures of science, new meaning through art. Um, so those are some of the background. But this coming back to social sculpture is also informed by some recent refiguring of the work of the Artist Placement Group, which was also active in the 60s. And um, Claire Bishop, who's a critic active now and who is coming out with a new book soon, has been really looking at this and many other social practices uh, in which you're creating tension to create shift in practice. Um, and in refiguring APG, there's been a lot more room to consider social practice and where there's a lot of conflict and nuance and difficulty um, and that those things are very productive. Um, so we're looking at this in a way of basically enacting what C.P. Snow, who some of you will have heard of him from his Reed lecture in Cambridge in 1950, um, suggested that the two uh, cultures of art and science being as different as they are should be given a chance to come into contact to create clashes, which will create uh, creative chances from those clashes of these two very distinct cultures. And so that's the, uh, the framework that we're using to really open up practice in both of these fields by creating these clashes and describing the chasm in between. So I am an evolutionary biologist, and I've learned that the same process of organic adaptation that we study in the lab is uh, a process that can be translated into adaptation in the culture of science as a way of knowing. And C.P. Snow's creative chances really are the same thing in a cultural context as mutations in the evolutionary process. And so the idea is that these mutations can put us out of the, push us out of the context of current constraints. And in science, those, among those constraints are reductionist thinking, over-formalization, statistical simplification, uh, perceptions of negative results, and the pursuit of ideal results in the face of the variability of nature. And so uh, we seek to, to push the science uh, through these chance happenings by the uh, juxtaposition of our two practices in the same space. The practice of science itself is rapidly evolving, uh, and it becomes more and more evident that uh, science is fundamentally a social endeavor. And uh, as the technologies develop and we're able to address long-standing complex problems, it becomes more and more important that the social endeavor include a broader and broader uh, diversity of approaches. Uh, and we recognize that in the structure of science, the very things that make it powerful are also its constraints and that the uh, structure of practices in art can complement the structure of the practices in science. And we hope by clashing them, we can find new approaches. Mm -hmm. So we've been asked a number of questions about this collaboration, and we thought we would interact with each other over the answers that we've had to give. And in that sense, you're going to see, in many ways, the differences in the way that we answer them and the similarities. And those seem to be pretty informative to the way that the discussion and the practices interact. Um, so it, for, uh, it, to begin with, as far as my practice is concerned, I, I make drawings. Uh, my work engages images and concepts of nature-based patterns, and they often cross into the histories um, and inquiries of, of these two fields and, and put them into contact. Um, my recent drawings on, of, on paper and on walls, I use the visual vocabulary of the Victorian decorative arts, which were deeply influenced by the emerging patterns of the young science of biology. And uh, they also existed at the edge between the age of the artisan and the age of industry, which are a huge influence on both of these fields. Um, the works embody the dialectics of the general and the particular, the ideal and the damaged, 
um, the human made and the natural. And craftsmanship plays a problematic role in my work um, as the wall drawings live this, these short and lavish lives and die at the end of the exhibition. And the works on paper are these overwrought universes of dirt and detritus in which the white space, the space not acted upon, is as, as important as the space that's been acted upon very, very, in a very detailed way. I study the internal biology and genetics that underlie evolutionary adaptation to changing environments. Theodosius Dobzhansky once famously said that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Conversely, nothing in evolution makes sense except in the light of biology. And neither of those make any sense when you take the organism out of the context, the environmental context, which called forth the adaptations we're interested in making sense of. And so we study uh, the variation in biological processes within the organism, the organization of that variation at the population and species level, and its association with variation in climate. And through that approach, we uh, uncover the most and least likely paths of future evolution, as well as explanations for extant patterns of diversity in the natural world. Mm -hmm. People have often asked, uh, you're an artist in residence at biology lab, what could that possibly mean? Uh, and a really, uh, as for, in a, on a basic level, and it means that I carry out the daily practice of my professional life. My activities that would ordinarily happen in the studio happen in the lab alongside the daily activities of Steve and the five to ten other researchers who are working um, in his ecology and evolution lab at the University of Pittsburgh. The pro process, as we said, is modeled on this process of evolution where these two cultures have to come into contact on a daily basis. So I often get asked what an artist in residence does in my lab. And um, my response is that an artist in residence, ex in residence explores and expresses dimensions of knowledge that are related to our scientific areas of inquiry, um, but are not as readily addressed by the formal scientific method. Uh, an artist in residence engages the other members of the group in thinking and acting upon thought in ways that challenge and permeate their engagement with the world, and thus enrich their ability to understand it more fully. We had a variety of thoughts going into this collaboration, some of mine um, being a, a bit more formalized because I had approached Steve. Um, but Steve, you might say a bit about what your response was when I approached you with this. Yeah, so I, Natalie just contacted me out of the blue and said, hey, I'm an artist, I'm interested in science, would you like to have coffee? And um, I thought, oh, I'm a scientist who is somewhat interested in art. Yeah, sure, I'll have coffee. Um, and in that conversation, I really appreciated Natalie's intensity um, and her, um, I think, really pretty remarkable analytic abilities. Um, and her approach to the discussions that we had. And I liked her art. <laughs> uh, so I thought there was enough resonance in the conversation that we should probably continue to talk. Yeah. And that was really the basis, the, the beginning. And I'd been seriously entertaining, as I said, this is a, it was a bit more digested in my head when I approached Steve, and I'd been seriously entertaining this idea of being an artist residence in a biology lab uh, for some time. And over the course of the previous year in arriving in Pittsburgh, I've now been there for two years, um, I had been regularly visiting the lab websites of Pitt and CMU. Um, and Steve's lab kept catching my eye. The plants, evolutionary biology, their parallel work in the lab and in the field. Um, big, uh, small experiments about a big picture, so I knew that's where I had to start because there were a lot of really keen parallels. Um, I was interested in the outside in a residency that would bring my practice into, the, into contact with the practice of scientists in the same space and time. But I thought it would take some time uh, for this to happen. As it was on impulse at the end of our meeting, I proposed being an artist in residence in his lab to Steve. Uh, and in almost stereotypic scientific response, it was, great, how should we proceed? <laughs> so, 